Hey everyone, Venger version 2 is coming really soon. The code name is Vienna. This is why you see this beautiful background behind me now. In fact, yesterday we announced the release date. That's right, Venger version 2 will be released on the 7th of June. That's in 19 days from now, really soon. So by now, all the major breaking changes are done and the beta version has been out for a few weeks and is being tested by teams in our community and I'd like to thank you all for the feedback you're providing. Very, very valuable. So just to get you all excited about this release, if you're not already excited enough, I want to show you some really cool stuff that we've been working on recently. And that is the new admin UI. Now we've teased some of the new designs in the last video that David and I did when we answered uh, community questions about version two. Now I can show you some working code, some uh, features which you will be able to use very soon. So why is the admin UI so important? Why is it one of the most anticipated new features of version two? Well, let's take a look at the existing admin UI. So this is what you have right now, version 1.9, and it's okay. But there are some major points that we want to address. First of all, the look and feel. Now, it looks fine, it's all right. Back when I started building Venger, I found um, a UI library that looked okay. It's the Clarity library from VMware. And I just used it because I didn't want to spend time designing a whole new design system. I had other things to build at the time, but now is the time when we want to do something about this. There's also some pain points when you're using the admin UI as it is at the moment. Some user experience aspects could be improved. Another thing is that in its current form, it doesn't actually utilize a lot of the power of the Venger API. And lastly, while the extensibility is good, in fact, better than a lot of other systems, there's still a lot more we can do to allow you to extend the admin UI and make it your own. Now, let me show you what is coming. So here is your new admin UI. There's still a work in progress, so some of the details will change between now and the final release, but there's enough there that I can show you some of these features. Let's talk about list views. So in our admin UI, as in almost any kind of um, dashboard type of app, views come down to two kinds, lists and details. In the Venger API, we have this interface called paginated list, and we use it for virtually all of our list endpoints or list queries. The paginated list interface is really powerful because it comes with advanced filtering, sorting, pagination, and is automatically updated whenever you add any custom fields. The problem is, in the existing UI, we don't use this power at all. There's no way to access these advanced features like filtering and sorting and so on. So we set out in version two to create a brand new data table component that fully takes advantage of these advanced features that we've offered all along in our API. Here's our product list, and you can see straight away we have more columns, and you'll see that we have on some of these columns these sort icons, so that's the first thing we can now add sorting to columns. We can also filter columns. For example, we can filter on Booleans. We can filter on strings. And we can take advantage of the very advanced filtering options that our API exposes. even going as far as using regular expressions. So example, I can search for camera, but then I can take advantage of regular expression syntax to have much more control over these filters. We can also expose a lot more information about each list now because you're able to select which columns you want to display. For example, we can look at the IDs, the created date or the update date, and we can get rid of any columns that we're not interested in at the moment and focus down on those that make sense. Not only that, we can reorder the columns. And the options that we pick will persist between page reloads and even log out, logging out and logging in. They're stored specifically to the current logged in administrator. And we can always reset the view back to how it started. Now this new data table component is so powerful it covers every possible feature you would need in a list view, which means we can use the exact same component 
everywhere. For example, in our collection view, we're using the same component. When we view the contents of a collection, we're using the same component with all the same features. Or if we want to look at a particular product and see the list of variants, again, we're using the exact same data table with all the same features. This is an effort towards standardization, which is also part of the work that we're doing on the UI right now to reduce the number of different components that you need to know to build UI extensions and to implement some well-defined patterns so that whenever you need to write your own list view or your own detail view, you have a very clear template and set of components which is standard across the whole app and makes your UI extensions seamlessly fit in with the rest of the admin UI. Now let me show you something else that is really exciting with this new data table, how it handles custom fields. So here we are on the product variant view. This is a new view that is uh, in the new UI. Now what happens if we want to add some custom fields to the product variant entity? Let's do that. All right, so we're defining a couple of custom fields. We've got a weight and a GTIN. What does that stand for again? Define GTIN. Global trade item number, basically the barcode. Um, so we've got the GTIN and the weight. Let's restart the server so that these custom fields can take effect. Now, for those of you who are familiar with how custom fields work, they're pretty magic. They're gonna update the database. They're gonna add uh, new sorts, filters, and fields to our GraphQL APIs. They're gonna update the admin UI so you can interact with those, you can, so you can set the values and so on. But they've never had any effect on the list views until now. Let's see what happens now. Okay, I think, yep, server's restarted, so let's refresh this page. Okay, everything looks the same, but now let's check the columns. We have the weight and the GTIN. I filled in the values in the meantime to have some realistic data to work with, but look what we can do now. Now when we add a filter, we can filter by weight. Let's find everything that's greater than, say, one kilogram. Here we go, there's 61 results. And we can compose these filters. So let's also say it must be less than two kilograms. So we've filtered that down to 30 results now. We can also sort the weight, start with the lightest or start with the heaviest. We can also filter by barcode. Let's say that we want one that contains the string 264. And here we go. And of course these columns can be, can be uh, ordered as well. So if we want the barcode right next to the SKU, which kind of makes sense, we can do that. The other nice thing is that all of these filters and sorts are actually persisted to the URL. So this URL maps directly to the state of this list. So I can refresh and because of the URL, we get the list back in the exact same state. So you can even send a link to a colleague with uh, the exact state of the list that you want them to see. Now, a lot of effort has gone into making these features really easy to use. So when you build your applications and extend the admin UI, you can use these features with no hassle. So even though this view, for example, has many advanced features to actually write it is relatively simple. I want to show you some of the behind the scenes APIs that you will be using when you're building things like this. So let's look at the product variant list component, which is what we've been looking at. Here it is. As you can see, it's not very much code. Most of it is dedicated to defining the filters and the sorts. It's not even 100 lines of code. We can look at the template now. And the template is basically just a declarative data table where we define each column. Here's a column and here. The column can contain any kind of uh, rendering logic that you like and everything's declarative, so it's very straightforward to see what's available and how it's, how it's gonna actually render. And we've seen some of the different kinds of filters, but it can get more advanced than that. For example, we can also filter here by facet value. 
So let's say we want to see only the electronics. Here we go. Or we want to see electronics or plants. So as you can see, this is a bit of a more complex uh, filter component. The great thing about this is that you can define any arbitrary component for your own filters. So let's take a look, for example, how this facet value filter is implemented. We'll head over to the product list component. And we can see here where we're defining our filters. We can define a custom type where we supply a component. We tell it how it is going to serialize the values and deserialize de it to and from the URL, um, how we're going to display the label, and so on. And that's all it takes. The facet value form component is something that we already ship because we use it in many places in the application. So this is literally all the code that was needed and you'll be able to define your own for your own application. So one final thing I want to show you in this demo is a brand new way to extend the admin UI, which is going to be incredibly powerful, which is this pattern of using tabs here. Now you can see on the products route, we've got two tabs for products and product variants. Not all of the routes have tabs. In fact, at the moment, most of them don't have tabs, but tabs can be added to any list or detail view, and you'll be able to define your own tabs. And it's very, very straightforward. I'm going to give you an example. Let's add a tab to this products view. Let's say we want to add a tab for stock control. You might write a custom plugin, which does some advanced stuff. Uh, al allowing you to see like low stock or stock that's about to run out. And so you might it might make sense to add a tab here because it's to do with the products. So first of all, we have a simple component here. It's actually not doing anything. We're just going to display a message stock control. Now, because we in because in version two, we're updating to the latest Angular version, we can use the new standalone components feature, which means that we can supply components without attaching it to an ng module, which can really cut down on the amount of boilerplate you need to do to just to uh, pass components into the admin UI. So we've got our component defined. Let's see how we add that onto the product list view. So we're going to use this page service. We're going to say reg register page tab. You know what? I might switch Copilot off for this because it's getting in the way. So we've got to specify the location. Now the location can be any of the views in the in the app. So you want the product list. We're going to specify the tab name. We're going to call it stock control. We'll give it a route, which is going to be um, how we route it in the in the URL, and we'll call it stock control. And then we just need a component. And we will pass it our stock control component. Okay, that's it. Now let's take a look as the page refreshes. Okay, and here's our tab. And here's our stock control component. So that's literally how easy it's going to be to add new new views, new tabs to any page in the new admin UI. So I hope that little preview has got you excited for the release, 19 days. There will be a beta release coming out in the next week or so um, with these features so you can play with them before the final release and provide us with some feedback. And we're just really looking forward to being able to deliver the best, most advanced commerce platform to you very soon.